Hey everybody, let's give this a go. Let's see if we can't make some forever blooms and dry up some orchid blooms. I have never done this before, but I got inspired on a video from Garden Answer and uh, she was drying these all kinds of blooms, regular garden blooms that you can find. And it got me thinking, why not try it with orchid blooms? So thank you for joining me. This is a two-step process. So this is day one. And I have just picked a bloom of my CG Roebling, my Bellara Peggy Ruth Carpenter, a bloom of my orange, sorry, golden peacock, and a Tolumnia Golden Fire. I thought I had plenty of silica, but I am not entirely sure. I need a big container because the Roebling requires it. So I struggled with finding something adequate, but maybe we've got enough silica to do this project and see what comes out. So thank you so much for joining me. If anybody has ever done this, I'd appreciate it if you let me know in the comments below. I have to work pretty fast. I'm just going to sterilize my secateurs one more time. Now that they're off the plant itself, it doesn't matter if I share the snippers amongst the stems. But I have to work pretty fast because I don't want the silica to acquire, get any humidity. And according to the instructions, you are to put a layer on the bottom. And if this container won't be filled up enough with silica, then I'm gonna have to try something else with a smaller container, but the Roebling itself has a specific size that kind of determines containers. And I don't want the humidity in the air to get into the silica straight away. So I'm going to cut the stem back as far as possible and place her in. The idea is to maintain the color which is awesome. Hopefully some of the shape, also with the little curly whirlies there. And then see if I can figure something out, because in future, this is awesome for an international giveaway. Can you imagine if I could get this right? I can do giveaways without having to worry about any kind of restrictions. And they would be pretty, I think. Now, the idea is to very carefully fill silica all around the bloom, let's say such as this. I may have to press down a little bit, we'll have to see. But that is the idea. So I'm going to get everything ready and work my way around the Roebling Bloom because she is the most precarious. And she is my test as to seeing if I can somehow get these blooms to maintain their beauty for all time or as long as possible. Okay, so that's the idea to build up and around. Meanwhile, the other ones are filling up nicely. They're okay because they have, you know, they're more of a flat bloom. Let's not forget that the little lip of the Brocatavola golden peacock is full. So I filled up there. Now I'm going to go on the underside of this petal. Fill up around the little loop of that one. Silica is reusable, 
So once this is all settled, done and dried, and I take it out, I can use the silica over and over again. If this is successful, I may need to get some more silica because we want those blooms that are coming like the Digbiana or the Gulf Green Hair Pig. I would like to see how I could preserve those. So here's that petal pretty much taken care of. I think I'll have enough, that's great. And now, very gently into the lip, really filling it up. And before we go with a weight issue, we will fill up around that lip, all the while trying to maintain the shape. That is the point of this exercise. Not to flatten it, not to press it, not to lose the structure, not to lose the beautiful color. To some degree, the color will be lost. It'll fade a little bit. White flowers go creamy. Some of these colors may actually go a little bit darker. At least that's what I've read up about, but a little bit of contrast is not a bad thing. So I'm just going to hold my bucket because I don't want to waste what is inside by pouring it and then it gets stuck to the edge. So they all need to be quite full. And this can take anywhere from two to five days. If you have very fleshy blooms, seven days. But seeing as orchid blooms aren't fleshy, I am going to check after two days. Now the trouble will start when I start to close the lid and the silica shifts. So I'm going to add more onto the side around the edges to keep that little pyramid up and somewhat maintained so it doesn't collapse on me. This is a five pound bag, which I would say for this project was woo, just enough, thank goodness. And I may get myself another bag, like I said, if this experiment works. I'm going to seal this container tight because of the residue. I don't want that to attract any humidity. And then this is my box, which is seals tight quite nicely. I have little latches and I will put this in a cool, dry place, which is not so difficult this time of year. I'll leave it on the bottom shelf and we shall see each other in two or three days. So fingers crossed that this works would be exciting because then my options are limitless as, well, as to what I can do with my blooms for you. <laughs> see you just now. Right, so it's been two days. I hope the light is okay. I have certain things that happen during the day that I now have to see how I can organize my filming, but I cannot delay this much longer because being fine bloomed, fine structures, maybe two days is enough for these. So let's have a look-see. I believe buried down here somewhere was a Procatavola golden peacock. So instead of digging it out, let's see how the structure is. Yep, it's dry and super delicate. Okay, next step is to very, very gently pour out the silica. Um, let's go this way. Hang on a second. 
just want to make sure that you are in shot. All right, let's give this a goo. I can already see that one petal was not laid flat. Whoa, the dust. So more practice will be required. Let's see. Oh, I hope you can see everything because that is dusty. Oh, it looks a little bit awkward, but it's not so bad. I hope that it's not so bad watching this happen either. Let's get out the little Tulumnia bloom. I'll just brush off the excess silica and see what we've got. See how this petal folded in amongst itself? It may actually need a little bit more time. Super fragile. And because it was folded in and amongst itself, it hasn't dried out as well as the other one, but I'll get to that. I'm jumping ahead of myself. The idea is also to store the blooms in a little bit of silica. I won't be doing that at this point because I have other intentions. I have to practice a little bit more to get it right. You can see a dried columnia flower that has held its color and it is quite dry. And I say quite dry with certainty, even though white might not be the right term, but there's no more moisture in this bloom. So tulumnias are a go. All right, let's try and get out the golden peacock and the Bellara, Peggy Ruth Carpenter. She's not ready yet. There is still too much going on. I can feel that there is still some moisture in that structure. So two days. We're not quite there yet. I'll leave that back inside, which can be done. That's the nice thing about this method. If you're not there yet, then put it back. Let's see how the golden peacock is doing. Yep, there's still moisture in there. The color is holding up quite nicely, I must say. So that is going to go back in. And because this petal is still very flimsy, I'm going to leave the CG Roebling blue indigo inside, although the lip is already very dry. It already has a crunch, a texture to it. And with that, day two, this is also quite crunchy and dry. This not because it was folded over. So there was more moisture between the petals. Despite thinking, I was super cautious. You can also see how the color has darkened a little bit. And this one still is showing true colors. Right. So very carefully, we go back and fill up around and in to the blooms. Okay, so I'm going to hedge my bet here that I have another day to go. So I just disturbed that petal there. I have another day to go with these blooms, maybe two, just to be on the safe side. I'll just keep that a little bit exposed because it is already dry. 
and we'll look at it in a couple of days. But the Tolumnia, one more look, looking fine, I would say. Yeah, that works. So I'll see you in a couple of days. Oh, I need to get into that box. I wonder if I have anything salvageable left. I've left uh, the flowers in there much longer than I would have liked. Um, double check, it's now day five. Yeah, not happy with that with thin blooms, but I wanted to show you how the silica changes color. You see those green little dots? That shows you if you were to have this large quantity show green dots, it's time to get it dried out and off into the oven in about 50 degrees Fahrenheit for a long time until your silica dries out and becomes orange again. Super interesting. All right, let's get these blooms out. Now I watched back the clip and when I saw how the petal had folded, I realized it happened when I was pouring the silica out. So I'm not going to try and do that this time because when it comes to the CG rolling, the sepal on the top has like a curve to it. And it is possible that I've destroyed that. So let me see how I can situate this again so that we all have a good look. And another thing I did, I put the tolumnia back and you can see how having had it in there far too long, it's a brown now. It's not that red anymore. So that was a test to see what it takes to lose the color. And tolumnias, I shall make a mental record that it takes two days for a tolumnia to dry. Let's see about the Peggy Ruth Carpenter Bloom. Oh, that looks pretty good. It looks all right. What do you say about that? It's not too bad. It compares with a Peggy Ruth Carpenter bloom that is going over on a spike. Doesn't maintain the dots as well. Again, this is five days. I would actually say if I had taken them out sooner, I would still have more color. So that's good to know. And here is the golden peacock, which has retained its color really well. One petal is a little bit more degraded in color, the one on the right. But that's not too bad. You see, the idea for me is to get this right with the blooms and then put them in box picture frames in order to preserve them like a photograph, but you know, with a three dimensional sides to it. So this is going to be a little bit tricky. Oh, she's very, very tissue papery. So how am I going to do this? Hang on a second, let me get rid of the blooms. Put them up here for a little bit. I'll pay, make notes. Two days for tolumnias, and I should not have waited five days for the other blooms. Okay, the scraping is a little bit uh, precarious. Let's see how I can do this. Yeah, you can see how the petals are moving. And that's what happened the first time. Let me see if I can gently pull her out. Well, there we go. All right, hey, now, I am not too disappointed. 
I have maintained the shape, including the curl on the bottom. Now, the, the, the next time I'm going to try this is with blooms that are three or four days old, not a week, 10 days, because my CG rolling is still in bloom, but take much fresher blooms and only wait three days, maximum four, in order to preserve them. And if I can get it right, this is gorgeous in a box frame, in my opinion. This is a mistake from when I poured her out the first time and didn't put the petal, the sepal back properly. So it was a little bit folded, but she is dry. She is crunchy like wax paper. Got that kind of a crisp crunch to it. But I would say for a first try, this can be done and it will be repeated. And the rest of my silica now is going back into its sealed airtight container. If I were to save these blooms, I'm not going to, but if I were to save them, I would put them in with a thin layer of silica into like a Tupperware container that would fit together with a little layer of silica on the bottom. And then that should preserve them until such a time that I would put them into a box frame. Maybe by next year I'm good enough and I can do actual Christmas presents. And of course the idea being that giveaways, I would make a box frame and, you know, show all the blooms that are available that are looking pretty and then the winners can you know winners one two three can choose which one they want based on the position of the prize or whatever so there's thoughts cruising through my head with this idea and i am glad that i have a pretty good feeling now as to how i can preserve a digbiana bloom i also want to preserve a golf green hair pig and anything else that comes to mind and initially it'll be individual blooms in box frames and maybe one day I can do a little collage of various little blooms like a box frame of only telumnias and things like that that's the idea so thank you I appreciate it if you stuck with me towards the end and I hope that uh, if you've ever done this before, would you let me know? And what is your experience about it? If there's something I can learn and clean, I can take on board in order to be more successful every single time. I would really appreciate it. Have a wonderful day, everybody. I appreciate your time. Stay safe. Take care. Bye.